It's the Blues Rock Show with Pete Francis and Willie Witten. Welcome to the Blues Rock Show. Pete Francis alongside Willie Witten. It's back to just us this week, Willie. And yeah. Santana just released a new album, Blessings and Miracles, just came out. Santana's kind of a legacy artist, Willie. He's in his 70s, but he's still putting out music. And on yeah. this album, and something Santana has done for much of his career, is we see him collaborating with some big name artists. When you see an artist like Santana that has accomplished so much and is so prominent on the music scene, do you like it, the fact that he's going out and he's still collaborating with a lot of different artists? Or should an artist of his stature just put out his own stuff and kind of skip the collaborations? Well, I think that's a good question, Pete. And I think there's a part of this, the answer to this question is the idea of wishful thinking. Santana's first three albums, I think are three of the greatest late 60s, early 70s, that psychedelic rock era. He certainly brought in Latin rock. So the wishful thinking part is, if I could have Santana back in Santana, Abraxas and Santana 3, like, yeah, I don't want him collaborating with anyone but his band. But here's the reality. Those were moments in time, very hard to replicate by anyone. So I think the fact that he's in his 70s and he's still playing at all is pretty remarkable. Sometimes I feel like his more recent collaborations get a little bit too poppy. They're trying to be a little bit too friendly to a wide, wide, wide range. But I don't know. I, you know, it's hard to fault someone. And, you know, I did this to Clapton a couple of weeks ago, rip into them for not being what they were when they were in their 20s and 30s and 40s. And that's not fair. So if I'm being honest, Santana's still at it. I'll take it. Thumbs up for him. What do you think? Am I being too generous to him? No, I, I think it's really cool that he's going out and doing these collaborations because he doesn't really have to do this at this point. Right. And we mentioned he's a legacy artist. Obviously, if you're from the baby boomer generation, you know who Santana is. But yeah. if you're a teenager today, do you necessarily know who Santana is? That's why I think it is such a great idea for him to continue to do these collaborations. On this album, he teamed up with Chris Stapleton. Well, a lot of people know who Chris Stapleton is today. He's sure. extremely successful, extremely popular. So for Santana to team up with someone like him, I think that's very smart. That's great marketing by Santana. I think him having these sort of collaborations is great because he's exposing his music to a new generation of fans who maybe hadn't heard of him before. So no. I think that's really great. This album, we also see him teaming up with Rob Thomas again. Yep. Now, oh. if you were around in the 1990s, I was a kid back then. You pretty much could not go in the car and turn on the radio and not hear smooth, right? That's right. It was literally played as much as any song in the 1990s on the radio. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. And you know, Pete, what you said, and I guess I didn't think about it. I'm being a little bit too myopic. I'm not really being open-minded is I've loved Santana since I was in middle school. So I forget what you said. There's a lot of people who have never heard of him and they're not going to start in the record bin on Santana one. That's not where they're right. starting. So this can be a great gateway. The same way that we talk about Greta Van Fleet being a gateway to some of the old rock and roll. Yeah. I didn't think about that, but, but you're right, Pete. I think that's a huge thing to consider. And it's a generational difference. I do think there will be older fans who will look at this and sort of give the, uh, it's another collaboration album. Mm -hmm. But I think if you could enjoy the songs for what they are, because I'm sure there people are going to find some songs they like. It's a way to reconnect with the younger generation for sure. Mm -hmm. And by the way, just for the record, that's my favorite Santana album. It's Santana three. But wishful thinking, that's never coming back. So I think be thankful for what he got. And I'm glad to see him still making records. It's yeah, and he cool. goes from smooth to move <laughs> with Rob Thomas on this album. And you know what? I, I don't know if I've really even like heard of anything from Rob Thomas in recent years. Uh -uh. So, I mean, they had such a big hit together. Why not join forces again? Obviously, I don't think this song is going to be the mega hit that that was. But... I've heard the song and I think it's still a pretty good song. So I think good for both of them. I think that's great. 
And I think it's also a little bit frightening to think of that not only is Santana doing the collaboration now, but you just mentioned it. So is Rob Thomas. He's now gone from being the zeitgeist to being, hey, he's a collaborator as well. But no, it's cool. And it's in sometimes I think we're too hard on these older generations. If I'm still playing any guitar at all when I'm in my 70s, I'd be impressed. So more power to him, right? Yeah. So Joe Bonamassa, he's releasing his new album later this month. Time Clocks, that's out October 29th. He's put out three singles so far, Willie. Notches, which is the first single, just went over a million views on YouTube. What are your thoughts on Notches? Would you put that up with Bonamassa's best work? Right. I have to preface this with right now. Right now, I would not. And, and unequivocally, I'd say right now, no, I would not put that up with one of his just to throw it out there, top five or top 10 songs. I think it's a fine song. Don't get me wrong. But I want to be careful because I remember when Royalty came out, I reviewed it. I gave it a grade. And then about two months later, I looked back after having listened to it more and wished I had given it a better grading. And so I think that what I found with a lot of Jobo's work is that it has this sort of creeping ability to get better over time as you listen to it. So I think the answer to that, Pete, is and I know it's dodging the question, but you'll have to ask me a couple months from now, because that's sort of what Joe's stuff at least does for me. Would you put it in a top 10 of one of his top 10 songs? As of right now, no, I would not put it in his top 10 songs. But the thing is, Joe Bonamassa, he's released so much music and yeah. so many albums. That's a really, really hard feat to reach to, to get into his top 10. So, no, I wouldn't put Notches in his top 10. I think it's very solid. I think it's a good song. And it's a song, Willie, when you listen to it, I mean, the chorus is, is basically that riff. Yes. You know, and if you can grab people in a chorus with a, uh, a guitar riff and really get mm -hmm. people's attention like that, I, I think that's great. So I, I think the song is, is very good. I think it's very solid. I wouldn't put it in his top 10 songs. However, Willie, we've both gotten the chance to receive this album before it's come out. And I've yeah. had a chance to really dive into this album over the last week or so. What I've got to say, you know, royalty was very good. That was voted Blues Rock Review's number one album of 2020. Right. Time Clocks, I think, is even better. Okay. This album, from start to finish, not a bad track on there. And one thing that has really stuck out to me so far listening to this album is I think Joe really dives deeper lyrically with this album than some of his previous works. He's writing some pretty deep stuff on this. And a lot of these songs have so many different layers to them. It's almost like right. Joe and Kevin Shirley kept challenging each other. We're like, okay, how do we add another layer or another element to take this song even higher? And that's what we kind of see with this album as a whole. So right now he's put out three singles. Time Clocks was another one. And The Heart That Never Waits, I believe, was the other single that he's put out. Three very good songs, but I don't even think those are in the top three songs on this album, actually. That's so I, I think when people actually hear this entire album, for me, my personal favorites are tracks six through eight. Okay. So when people hear this album, check out those tracks. But from start to finish, I, I think this is a really, really good album. And I think it's one of Joe's best albums since The Ballad of John Henry. Well, you mentioned something about him and Kevin Shirley one-upping each other, adding layers, becoming a little more nuanced, more advanced, which I think is true. I thought some of that certainly got started on royalty as well. What I want to sort of tie in here is we both agree that we don't think it's one of his best, being the word, tracks. Mm -hmm. But like you said, with the riff being sort of doubling in as that chorus, that catchiness to it, if I phrase the question differently, would you feel differently? And that question is, do you think it eventually might be one of his 10 most lasting and recognized tracks? That's a great like question, Willie, question. because when you think about this, Joe Bonamassa is more popular now than wow. he's ever been. Yep. So a song that he puts out today is going to get more 
miles or more notches in this case <laughs> than his previous work. I mean, that's just the reality of it. I mean, right. Joe Bonamassa is a lot more prominent now than he was 15 years ago. Yep. So I think, you know, I think this song is going to get a lot more miles because of that. So that, I mean, that's a great question, Willie. And when you look at something like Spotify plays, I bet Notches will get a lot more Spotify plays than some of his previous work because he's just a lot more popular now than he was 10, 15 years ago. I agree with that analysis. You just mentioned something. You were talking about Spotify, Spotify plays, Pete. And wouldn't you know it, Spotify's back in the news. Yeah, Joe loves Spotify. Oh, uh, yes, he loves them <laughs> so much. Spotify has now introduced or is in the process of introducing, rolling out something called, this is the, its name, I believe, unless I'm misreading it. It's called Car Thing. All right, and let me read to you what it is about. It is a smart player that fills your car with music, news, entertainment, talk, and more. Sounds like the radio, Willie. Sounds like the radio or a slightly crappier version of Sirius XM. Now, here's the thing, Pete. It doesn't come with a Spotify subscription, or at least unless I'm reading this incorrectly, it's an additional subscription. Pete, do you have any interest in this? And do you think other people will have interest in this? Well, I'm not a huge Car Spotify thing, consumer to begin with. So I don't know if I'm the best person to answer that question. And I mean, I guess the reason why I'm not a big Spotify consumer is just because being with Blues Rock Review, we get sent music all the time. So I'm not necessarily going to Spotify to try to find and discover things like a lot of people might. Sure. So, you know, as far as in the car. Now, here's a question, though, Willie. How does this affect royalties because obviously an artist they would get paid more if their song gets played on the radio right than if it was streamed on spotify so if you're using this service in the car then does that count as a stream so like the artist would get paid for a stream and not like a radio play i don't know the technicalities of whether it will be counted as the same or discounted or more i don't know but i also have read this that in the very near future, the streaming services are going back to the US Copyright Board to look to renegotiate royalty rates with songwriters. And what the songwriters are saying is, on first glance, it looks to be the worst, lowest royalty rate ever for songwriters. I don't know if these are the same thing, but Pete, is Spotify just eventually and the streamers are they just going to overwhelm musicians and just going to get their way. I think so. I mean, they're already getting their way. I mean, and right now when you look at things and here's the other aspect to look at Willie. So someone like, for instance, we talked about Bonamassa and he commented to us about Spotify a couple of years ago in an interview and said he knew songwriters in Nashville with 25 million spins and they're getting a check for $700. You know, so, but he's a guy who's experienced both ends. Yeah. He's experienced the music industry before streaming in Spotify and with it. But we're going to get to a point, and this is going to come sooner rather than later, where a majority of the artists out there, they're not going to know anything different, Willie. I know. They're going to be around and coming up in the era of Spotify and the streaming platforms. And a lot of these musicians and artists will never really know what it's like to actually sell physical product. So for them, it's just going to be normal. They're not going to know any different. And I think that's just kind of the way that we're heading is eventually it's just going to get that way. And, and people are musicians or they're not going to know any different. So they're just going to have to evolve and adapt. Uh, boy, that's sort of like the Santana comment. You're right. I'm a little myopic. I forget about the point that this is what people are going to know. I don't love that. Pete, can I be blunt? Go for it. Here's my wish. Talking about wishful thinking, and this will be my last comment on this. I wish that Spotify would spend a little less time coming up with stupid things that no one really needs and a little more time 
thinking about not just theirs, but the music industry as a whole's longevity and future. Do you agree with that? Yeah, totally. What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments section below. What do you think of Joe Bonamassa's single Notches? Would you put that up with his best work? And do you like the fact that Santana is still going out and doing these collaborations with big name artists? Let us know down in the comments section below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Make sure to hit that like button. It really helps us with YouTube's algorithms so more people see the video. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. That's going to wrap up this week's edition of the Blues Rock Show. For Willie Witten, I'm Pete Francis. We'll see you next time.